Chinese artists born in the 1960s were at most teenagers when the Cultural Revolution ended in 1976. Few had the chance to participate in the political movement. Yet memories of those tumultuous years, although vague and fragmentary, remain with them until today, daunting and haunting them from time to time. In the recent decade, when a strange nostalgia for Mao's regime seems to be looming over a politically uncertain China, a number of contemporary artists take the visual memories of that disastrous period as a major theme of their artworks, as if in the hope of reminding us of its impact on Chinese adolescents from the 1960s through the 1970s and beyond. This paper discusses how a selected group of artists deal with different visual memories of their childhood during the Cultural Revolution. To most adolescents who were innocent onlookers, those days were of confusion and curiosity mixed with excitement, sometimes even fun and unnameable happiness. To youngsters aspiring to be actively involved like adults, it was a moment of passion and revolution. To those from families labeled as anti-revolutionary, it was a never-ending period of fear, pain, and suffering. Different from the political pop artist whose appropriation of the cultural revolution imagery is not necessarily directly related to their own experience or memory, and who are often cynical toward popular political icons, these artists tend to present their subjects from memories of figures and events closely related to their personal lives. Thus, their artworks often offer us unique ways to approach a historical period that has never been fully evaluated or understood. In this painting by Yu Hong, an elementary school girl appears to be immersed in her happy imagination a revolutionary one that is implied in the poster on the wall behind her. The figure in the poster is a young female red guard dressed in a militant outfit with a Mao pendant and a red guard arm badge, holding in front of her a rifle in the right hand and a red book of Mao Zedong's writings in the left hand. Such was a standard uniform and gear of a red guard. She is seen standing in front of a picture of TMA a fictional but iconic character from the story of the Red Lantern, one of the model revolutionary modern dramas approved and promoted by Mao Zedong's wife Jiang Qing, who was one of the key advocates of the Cultural Revolution. The title of the original poster, which is now shown in the artist's painting, is Be a Person Like Her, who refers to TMA. The little girl at the desk, which is a portrait of the artist herself at the age of six, seems to be aspiring to be like the Red Guard who is aspiring to be like the fictional heroine. Along with more than a dozen or so state-sanctioned model heroes who were known mainly through from school textbooks, movies, posters in public and private spaces, and street parades, TMA was propagandized as an exemplary figure for the young generations of Chinese to follow, to sacrifice themselves for the communist cause, of which they had little knowledge. For many, to be like a model hero was their ultimate life goal, which they hoped to achieve by following the steps of joining first the Little Red Guards, then the Red Guards, the Communist Youth League, and eventually the Communist Party. It was a past that was lofty and hopeful, especially for the generation of Chinese who were born in the 1960s when they were school children. 44 years since the end of the Cultural Revolution, most of this generation are in their 50s, who are now in key positions as political, social, or cultural institutions. In the case of the art world, many of them are now established as artists who hold important positions at state art institutions where they have fundamental influence on the development of art in China today. Different memories of the same period have affected their artistic creation in different ways and will continue to inspire younger generations of Chinese artists. The true impact of that period, however, at least to artists discussed here, is far from being recognized or acknowledged at any level in China today. 
its potential damage in power has never been seriously reviewed or criticized. The spirit of a bright and revolutionary life as seen in Yu Hong's painting is echoed in the works of many other artists. In the work by Qin Ke Wen, for example, the girl dressed in militant green is seen practicing ballet dance in her bedroom, with a clear reference to the iconic character from a revolutionary modern dance drama. On the radio box against the wall sits a picture of Lei Feng, the model character best known to the Chinese since the 1960s. For school children, most of the idealized heroes or heroines, heroines came from movies and posters of the model dramas as they were almost the only ones available that were played over and over again at movie theaters. Their aspirations to become heroes themselves shaped who they were even when they were in their teens. In order to be revolutionary enough, they had to behave like a hero who was always vigilant of his or her surroundings. This is very vividly visualized in Liu Xinghe's painting, in which a little red guard wearing a red tie is squinting at a potential enemy in his paranoid imagination. The accompanying text of this picture describes very much what youngsters of his generation had in their minds. I quote, I have always been cautious about my surroundings, even though some suspicious characters may appear cultured. I know there are bad people. Bad people always look like good people, but they are rotten to the core and always think of fighting back. We are the righteous, so we will always have enemies." End quote. As the Chinese who grew up in this period remember well, students were encouraged or even required by their teachers to report on anyone or anything that was suspicious or potentially anti-revolutionary. One of the lines that every one of this generation could not forget until today is, I quote, study hard and make daily progress, end quote, from Mao Zedong himself. This was what made the youngsters I quote, always be ready, end quote, to sacrifice for the communist cause of which they were claimed to be glorious successors. While the above paintings appear to offer a bright and hopeful and of course always revolutionary envisioning of the future, visual memories from those artists who also reveal a different side of the same period in Liu Qinghe's Capitalist Rotor, for example, there is a story that could not be told publicly until after the Cultural Revolution was over with the death of Mao. In the picture, Liu's father is seen standing motionless with his hands placed rigidly on his side and his head hanging low over his chest in a posture of acknowledging his guiltiness as an anti-revolutionary capitalist eroder. A board with his name crossed is hanging around his neck with a thin wire. The red cross signals his worthiness of death in this context. With the often agitating and chaotic background of such a public castigation blocked out of the picture, the artist bring the viewer's attention to the sole image of the man as an individual, one that meant the most to the artist in his memory of his father. While there's a sense of bitter humor in Liu Qing, Liu's retelling of his father's story, it is more of a mixed feeling of excitement, chaos, and even funniness in the memories of artists like Liu Daohong, who describes such a scene of public castigation that he remembered from his hometown, Qingdao City in eastern Shandong province. In his third park, a group of school kids are watching in excitement a short and thin looking man with his left arm in thick bandage hanging from his neck being denounced by two red guards to a group of onlookers stiffly standing below a platform. The red guard on the right is tightly grabbing the man's hair in his right hand in a gesture of either cutting his hair or simply pushing his head further downward. Such a disturbing scene was commonly witnessed during the Cultural Revolution, where the subjects denounced as anti-revolutionary, foreign or Kuomintang spies, traitors, or simply bad people, if they did not deserve a proper title, were humiliated by the Red Guards verbally and with symbolic acts like hair cutting. 
as is seen in the photo of Li Fan Wu, the former governor of Heilongjiang province in northeastern China. Such scenes left a confusing and often horrifying memories for those artists whose parents were the fortune, unfortunate target of endless public castigation and whose lives were closely tied up with their reactionary families. In the works of Tang Zhi Gang, for example, the artist's memory of the Cultural Revolution period appears to be stuck in his childhood, where he, which he spent with his parents on a rehabilitation farm in Yunnan province in southwestern China. These farms were reserved for all types of families that were labeled anti-revolutionary and who were exiled from their urban homes to remote and impoverished areas for essential transformation, in quotation marks, through hard labor. The figures in town's paintings are always children, but they are dressed up and behave like adults. They're often seen in political meetings where they mimic adults who appear to speak and listen under the very gaze of, from the person in the portrait on the wall behind them, an image that is instantly reminiscent of the ubiquitous portrait of Mao. Such meetings in the 1960s were often occasions for ousting those who were not standing in line with the Communist Party and its top leader. Children of these ousted adults had to follow the fate of their parents. As Tang started, I quote, on the day when my father was denounced, his son was also bullied by other kids playing under the table, end quote. His memory of a miserable childhood is vividly and cruelly depicted in a series of paintings that he entitled Chinese Children. In his Chinese Children, a fairy tale of 2004, one child is fear, fiercely stomping down on a boy lying on the floor while the others are watching relentlessly with cold and indifferent facial expressions. His memories of those horrifying days and nights has remained haunting Tang until today, which resulted in his dark view of life as he says, I quote, the things that I have gone through as an adult are no big difference from what I experienced back then, end quote. Memories of those artists who were separated from their parents at a very young age are mixed with their wild imaginations often based on what they witnessed in reality. In the case of Yun Ji, for instance, he was separated when he was five from his parents who were sent from Beijing to a re-education, in quotation marks, camp in the countryside and had to live with his grandparents for a few years in a town near Hangzhou in the south. He said that he could see his parents, I quote, only now and then for almost 10 years, end quote. For him, the Cultural Revolution was a time, uh, I quote, a time of immense chaos and confusion, end quote. This is well illustrated in his crowded, in his, in his paintings crowded with fragmentary images of political events, different groups of people, slogans and banners, figures and landscapes that are pieced together to form a surrealistic reality. Squeezed to the sides and all corners of his paintings are often ghost-like figures who could be identified with what they wear or what they are labeled with as intellectuals denounced by the political authorities, including the artist's father who was a military doctor and his mother who was an architectural drafter. His dreams of reuniting with his parents turned into wild imaginations in which scholars like his parents are seen fleeing in horror. Such dreams and imaginations were shared by countless youngsters who suffered from similar situations during that period. One of the most devastating situations that youngsters had to learn to deal with is that of the Gao brothers. Their father, a factory worker who was labeled a, I quote, current anti-revolutionist, end quote, by the political authorities in their local city of Jinan of Sandong, Sandong province, was claimed in 1968 to, I quote, have committed suicide in fear of punishment, end quote. Their father's suicide, which they never believed was true, left behind a desperate family of a mother with six children. 
the trauma on the Gao brothers was never eased even when their father was claimed by the same government in 1980 to be innocent of all charges. The memories of their father became a driving force in their collaborated work since the late 1980s. In a number of their works, they relate the tragedy of their own and that of many others to the very leader of communist China and what he stood for. In their sculpture, The Execution of Christ of 2009, inspired by Goyer's the 3rd of May, 1808, the victim has been changed to Jesus Christ while the shooting soldiers to Mao himself. In their 2010 exhibition and Kemper uh, Museum of Contemporary Art in Kansas City, a pair of photoshopped pictures of the six skull brothers with their mother with the title Family Memory 1969 and 1999 are seen in replacement of the iconic Mao portrait over the Tiananmen entrance gate. In front of an enlarged photo of their parents, they placed their statue of Mao on his knees. A gesture of demand for Mao's confession of his sinful political campaigns of movements that resulted in their father's tragic death. In a photograph, in a photograph in which they posed for the New York Times, Gao Zhen is seen holding Mao's head from the same statue in his left hand with his right hand holding a cigarette while Gao Qiang is staring to his left side right into the camera. Their body language seems to be signaling a politically meaningful message a disdain for one's deified leader whom they hold responsible for their father's death or for the, and for the loss of thousands of lives during one of the most disastrous periods in modern Chinese history. The trauma has left a deep mark and a scar on the life and career of the Gao brothers, which could only be cauterized by a symbolic beheading of Mao, who is already on his knees. Visual reflection on the Cultural Revolution as seen in the works of the above artists indicates a retrospective approach to re-evaluating the impact of the turbulent period on Chinese adolescence. Their memories are unique because they were witnesses rather than participants like the generation before them and were often victims because of their family backgrounds rather than what they did themselves. Memories of these artists are indiv as individuals are legitimately an important part of a collective memory of the cultural revolution that has yet to be pieced together. Unfortunately, so far there has been no essentially meaningful research on the visual memories of this group of artists. In today's China, where researches on the history of the communist government is still somewhat a taboo, written literature on this period is under strict censorship and very often prohibited. With the very significance of the Cultural Revolution never truly assessed and an increasing anxiety over its plausible return, it is crucial and urgent that such visual memories should be seriously studied. Thank you.